welcome back to my channel. If you're a teacher like me trying to make your online Zoom classroom as secure as possible, and whether you're protecting this from outside security breaches or just managing your students within the live session, then keep watching. As you all know, Zoom usage has skyrocketed ever since the COVID-19 pandemic. This video conferencing platform has been an excellent tool for hosting online classrooms. However, the platform has been recently a target for online security breaches. In addition, a lot of my fellow teachers were complaining about the fact that their students were misusing uh, their time spent during the Zoom online classroom. I have put together five ways you can better secure your Zoom classroom. My first tip is to lock your session. This is a great way to kind of virtually close your classroom door once the live session has started. If you're taking attendance, then this is an excellent way to ensure that students are arriving to your live session on time. It helps to create an expectation for students that they have to be there when the live session begins or else they will not be admitted. This also prevents unwanted visitors from entering into your classroom once your session has started and it prevents the students that you have in your live session from sharing your session with other students in other classes or other sections. In order to lock your session, you're going to go ahead and click down here uh, where it says manage participants. You're then going to click on more and select the lock meeting option. Um, it's going to inform you that no new attende attendees can join this meeting once locked, which is what you want. So you're going to go ahead and click on OK. So after this point, you basically have your meeting locked. No one is going to be able to enter into a meeting without your permission. My second tip is to control your screen sharing settings. This will prevent students from inappropriately sharing their screens during your live session. If you're having students engage in student-led presentations, then you can enable this feature in order for them to share their screens and do their presentations. But during other times of your live session, you might want to keep this feature turned off. So now I'm going to be showing you how you can change your screen sharing settings. In order to do that, you're going to click on this arrow at the bottom of the screen next to the green share button and you're going to click on advanced sharing options. Underneath who can share, you want to make sure that it says only host or that's what you should be selecting. Now, in the instances where you want your students to be able to share your screen, for example, they're presenting something, um, you can change this um, option so that it says all participants and this way your students can also share their screen. My third tip is to use a password. Ever since Zoom has been facing security breach issues, they actually have made this feature a default. So once you set a meeting as of recently, this feature is automatically turned on, which is great. Just make sure that your password is not something that is being repeated over and over and that you're giving a different or creating a different password each time that you are creating a new meeting. So what I've been doing is I've been sharing the link ahead of time with students either via their school emails or on Google Classroom, which offers a double protection when it comes to security measures because you also have the students having to log into their Google Classrooms to basically access your your link and then like five to ten minutes before the session actually begins I will go ahead and post the password so that they know exactly what the password is um, for them to be able to join the session in this way I am ensuring that only my students have access to the password and that no one is joining way ahead of time so next I'm going to be showing you how you can change your password for a particular meeting. In order to do that, you need to be logged into your Zoom account on the web. And um, once, you're, once you're logged in, you're going to go ahead and click on schedule a new meeting and basically fill in the information that you need for that meeting. Then you're going to go ahead and scroll down to where it says um, meeting password. Now you'll notice that right now this is a default option. and like I mentioned, Zoom has done this uh, as an as a extra security measure. But in the future, perhaps, if this no longer is a mandatory option, this is how you could actually um, basically select having a password, but also change the password that you have. So for example, I might have this to be my password or any number that you choose. Just make sure that you are um, changing your password up every time that you would host a meeting so that students don't um, share or are able to predict what your password is. My fourth tip is to manage annotations. 
Annotations are a great feature on Zoom because it helps you kind of annotate your uh, presentations that you're trying to share with the students. But also the whiteboard feature is an excellent tool that almost mimics a smart board that you would use in class. Now during the times where you don't want students to engage in the annotation of your uh, resources or your presentation, make sure to have this feature turned off. This will prevent students from adding inappropriate annotations on your screen share and just overall reduce distractions. Your annotation settings, you're going to make sure that you're signed into your Zoom um, account on the web again and you're going to click on the settings option which is right here on your left side. Once your settings have loaded, you're going to go ahead and uh, scroll down to where you see um, the in-meeting basic option right here and then you're going to be selecting um, or looking for the annotations option so it should be somewhere right here all right and where you see annotations you're going to deselect if it says allow participants to use annotation tools to add information to share screen you want to make sure this is deselected so if it's selected you're gonna go ahead and turn it off all right this way um, students are not able to annotate your screen share Another option you want to make sure is turned off is this um, whiteboard option. So here it says allow participants to share whiteboard during a meeting and you don't want that. You don't want that for because then they're going to be, they might um, end up writing silly things on your whiteboard. So if this option is turned on, you can go ahead and turn it off. This way you are the only one that is able to annotate your screen share but also to annotate and use your whiteboard. My fifth and final tip for you is to manage registration. This is an excellent feature for several reasons. The first is that it collects the students' emails when they are basically signing up for your session. And it only allows students within the organization that you are part of to join your session. By collecting their emails, you can identify exactly which students are present in your session. One thing that some people were complaining about is that students were hiding behind fake names and basically saying inappropriate things during a session. This way, you know exactly who those students are based on the email that was collected when they actually registered for your session. You could also manually approve students if necessary. And again, this is just an extra security measure to make sure that you only have the students that you want during your live session. Now, one thing I want to mention for this feature is I believe it's only available for the licensed accounts, meaning that if you have the basic Zoom account, I don't think this feature will be available for you. Finally, in order to manage your registration option uh, for a particular meeting, you're going to again make sure that you're signed into your um, Zoom online web portal and then you're going to basically um, click on schedule a new meeting and you're going to name it whatever you'd like and you're basically going to scroll down to where you see this option right here which says registration and you're going to select required. So there you have it, five ways to better secure your online Zoom classroom. If you enjoyed this video and the tips that I provided, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, have a great one.